Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so we come across this quantity dA uh, when we're doing double and triple integrals. And although I've already explained in my video on the Gaussian integral, um, I'm going to explain in this dedicated video again why this quantity dA has to equal r times dr times d theta when we're working in polar coordinates. Um, and this is why. Well, remember, in rectangular coordinates, in the xy plane or xz plane or yz plane, dA is either dy dx um, or um, dz dx or uh, dz dy, depending on which of those three planes um, you're on. And I believe I said it in order, right? In, in the order that I named them, I told you what dA is. Either uh, dy dx, of course, you could say uh, dx dy, same thing, or um, dx dz or dz dx or um, dz dy or dy dz. That's what dA is. But when we switch po in polar coordinates, we have to say that dA is equal to r times dr times d theta. The surprise is this r here. Why does it have to be there? Well, let's look at um, polar coordinates here. So uh, we've got radially out to r, right, in polar coordinates. And then we've got theta um, going around starting from the positive x-axis. Okay, now look at uh, a small rectangle, an infinitesimally small rectangle in polar coordinates. The same infinitesimally small rectangle in rectangular coordinates would have dimensions, if we're in the xy plane, dy by dx or dx by dy, so area, dy dx or dx dy. Uh, the same small, infinitesimally small rectangle in polar coordinates can be seen right here in this, in this little thing here. Yeah? Now, it's pretty clear that the change along this way is dr. The infinitesimal, infinitesimally small change along this way is dr. However, remember um, from your lessons in trigonometry that the length from here to here would be r times theta, where r is the radius of the circle, and then theta being this angle right here, right, and this wedge. So th this length from here to here, this small guy, it's not, it's not a line, it's a curve. So the length would be r times theta. And therefore, an infinitesimally small change in this direction would have to be r times d theta. And therefore, an infinitesimally small rectangle would have dimensions dr by r times d theta. And therefore, its area, dA, would be r times dr times d theta. Yeah? Okay, cool. All right. I hope this clears stuff up. And yeah, keep watching. Take care.